I've been in Europe for three months now and this is the first time where I have been here uh, living day to day versus just visiting. Seeing what other people are wearing and how they get dressed in different parts of the world is always, I find, a really great source of inspiration for me to figure out how I can wear my clothes differently and to see my closet in new ways. So let's jump on in. One of the first things was that people just get dressed. Even if it's for the most casual of encounters, going for coffee, it's like this unspoken rule where you don't leave the house without putting your best foot forward. In Italian, it reminds me of la bella figura. It's just a form of self-respect, respect for others, and I love this philosophy. My parents are Italian, so the whole idea of la bella figura was actually brought up to me by one of you, Aurora, who is a Croatian. So Aurora explained to me that getting dressed, particularly to go for coffee, is such a strong leisure activity for most urban centers in Croatia. So I thought this was fantastic because sure enough, we had gone out for coffee at like 11 a.m. on a Tuesday, like a very random time, very random day, and everyone looked so good. And Aurora explained that this is actually called, hang on, I need to make sure I get this right. Spika fashion. I really hope I'm not butchering the pronunciation. Spika fashion translates to coffee rush hour fashion. So it's very normal for Croatians to get dressed really well, go for their coffee, and hopefully get photographed by street style photographers and these street style paparazzos. Putting your best foot forward and always looking your best, it doesn't have to be fancy, it doesn't have to be the most trendy. Stepping out, feeling really thoughtful and put together can have such a great impact on your day. And like I said, kind of romanticizes your life and gives us a sense of occasion on our day-to-day, -day, which is really great. So when it comes to actually getting dressed with that beautiful, like, bella figura, best foot forward idea, I often think that there's like this third dimension. A lot of times we hear about the rule like adding a third piece to your outfit, but we can't always do that when it's really hot. So what I've noticed about the looks here is that even if a look is really simple, for example, like a dress, a cute shoe, and a bag, the dress is either, you know, really colorful or has a cool print or an interesting silhouette. So even though the outfit itself seems fairly simple, there is that third dimension, if you want to call it that makes it interesting. That doesn't necessarily mean an extra thing that you're wearing. And Aurora actually gave me some really incredible Croatian street style accounts to follow. So I'm gonna put those in the description box below because I've started following them. They're fantastic. I mean, if you have local street style accounts from your country or your city that inspire you, put them in the comments below so that we can all kind of discover <laughs> these interesting street style accounts from other places in the world. I think it's like the best source of inspo. Another observation that I've made is that a lot of these outfits that I'm seeing that I really love on the streets are rooted in functionality. So a lot of the looks are really unfussy and this doesn't always translate to flat shoes or sneakers. I think it has a sense of just, you know, layers are really easy to take on and off. So your outfit can't really be fussy, which I think shows up in so many ways, whether it's like easy fabrics and textures like denim, linen, cotton, Cotton, just these nice, great fibers that are comfortable and easy to move around in, or a really comfortable set of layers, or a typical sneaker or flat shoe that's easy to walk in. And what I love about this sense of kind of functionality first is that it actually lends a lot of irony and almost like interest and quirk to these looks. And talking about this whole functionality piece, I think like the three star accessories in every outfit, it's always a good pair of shoes, a great pair of sunglasses or glasses, and a really great bag. All of these are in impeccable shape. They're not always like the newest or the trendiest, but they're super key and integral part to the outfit. So maybe like the bag is matched with the sunnies or like the sunnies are kind of matched with the overall vibe or pull out a specific color of the look. So these accessories seem to be the absolute key. Purses are always in really great condition and if they are, old and worn. They're so obviously well-made that they 
have like a really beautiful patina and they just look absolutely fantastic. And when it comes to shoes, if they are wearing a sneaker, they're either like really colorful or they have a really interesting profile or texture, that kind of thing. And finally, there are two little styling techniques. So the first one is wearing a blazer as a cape. I have fully made fun of this move before. I just thought bloggers do this to look cool and I've done it as a different way to style a piece. But now I finally understand why this is actually such a great styling move, primarily because the layers that you're wearing here, I find, need to be easily taken on and off in a very unfussy way. So when you're going out and it's still too warm to fully commit to the blazer, it's just the best way to kind of incorporate it in your outfit, carry it around with you without having to lug it in an arm and like potentially forget it somewhere. And you can still appreciate the outfit underneath. If you're at a cafe and it's a little bit chilly, when you're eating, you can definitely wear your blazer as a cape. I mean, you only need these little like T-Rex arms anyway. And when you're walking, I think you could totally pull it off as well. The only caveat is that your purse or your handbag would need to be crossbody, one that sits in the crook of the elbow or handheld. Otherwise, it's just like way too complicated to access what's in your bag. And the other little styling technique, which I have certainly used, but more for the purpose of adding a little bit of depth to my looks and that is to wear a sweater as a scarf in addition to like a little jacket. So, you know, if you've got like a t-shirt or a tank and you wrap a little sweater around as a scarf, I've seen a lot of bloggers wearing a blazer with a sweater tied around their neck as a scarf and I think this is a really great look. But you rarely actually see the blogger or I guess we rarely know if the person styling it this way actually puts the sweater on underneath. And let me tell you, at least me here in Europe, I have, because it's just a great, again, little styling hack. If you don't want to have the bulk of a full scarf, but you want to have that extra layer in case it gets cold, it's just a fantastic way to keep it on you and add to your look. So that is what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I know it's a little bit of a different format, a different location. Let me know if you like this kind of format or not. Just let me know in the comments below. I love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or if you learned something new, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I will be back with another slow fashion video. Ciao!